So in the last video, we saw how to use for loops, but for loops are not the only way to use loops in Python. The other common way of using them is called while loops. So let's see what it looks like. First of all, let's recap one of the things we did in the last video. We had total being equal to zero, and then we had for i in range one comma five colon four spaces, total plus equals i, and then print total. What this block did was it added up all the numbers through all the integers through one through five, not including five, to total, and then we printed that number. And that number is 10 because one plus two plus three plus four is 10. So can we do the same thing with a while loop? The answer is yes. Let's see what that looks like. Let's first initialize a new variable called total two to be zero. And then we're gonna write while j is less than five, do the following. And actually the while loop doesn't initialize the index for us, j for us. So we'll need to initialize it explicitly ourselves. So we're gonna write j equals one before we go into the while loop. And then while j is less than five, do the following, which is four spaces, of course, total two plus equals j, add j to the total two variable, and then j plus equals one. So add one to j. And then after the while loop, we're going to print total two. So what this block says is when we get to the while loop, check if j is less than five. And since it's true, I mean one is of course less than five, do the following, total two plus equals j, add j to total, and then add one to j. So j will become two, and at that point, we'll go back to the beginning of the loop again. And we're gonna check if j is less than five still. And of course, two is less than five, so we'll go through that again. And once j is four, we'll say add one to j, and j will become five. And when we go back here, we'll stop the loop right here and then we'll break out of it because j is no longer less than five and then we'll print total two. So this block pretty much does exactly the same thing as what the previous block does. So let's see if it works and it does. We print it 10, which is a sum of one, two, three, and four. So why would we want to use while loops instead of for loops? Well, it depends on the situation, but one situation where it's useful is when you don't know how many loops you need beforehand. So I'm gonna give you an example of that. Let's say you're given this list, given underscore list, which is five, four, four, three, one, minus two, minus three, and minus five. And let's say you don't necessarily know the contents of this list beforehand, but you know that this list is sorted in a descending order. So that means the largest number comes first in this list. And when you go right, you know that the numbers always go down or stay the same. So four is less than five and four is less than or equal to four and so on. And let's say you wanna find the sum of only the positive numbers in this list. How can we do that? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna run some kind of loops so that we can iterate over elements, but only the positive ones. So that way we don't know how many loops we need to find the sum of only the positive numbers. In a situation like this, for loops can be really useful. So let's see what that looks like by first defining total three to zero, and then the index i to zero as well. And then we're gonna write a while loop here with while given underscore list, square brackets i is greater than zero. Total three plus equals given lists, square brackets i, and then i plus equals one. So what we are saying here is first check the current element in given lists. So since i will start at zero, the first current element of given lists will be the first element, which is five, while this element is greater than zero, do the following. First, add the current element, given list square brackets i, to total, I mean total three, and then increment i by one. So that means just go to the next item. If we're examining 
this current item here, i would be zero. So we're saying, let's go to the next item, which is index one. So when i is equal to one, given list square brackets one would be the second item right here, four, and that's greater than zero. So we're gonna add that to total three, and then we're gonna go to the next item. And we're gonna keep doing that until we are right here, whose index is zero, one, two, three, four, five. And at that point, given list square brackets five would be negative two, which is not greater than zero. So we'll break out of the while loop. After that, we can print total three and see if we get the correct answer. And the correct answer is the sum of all of these numbers, five plus four plus four plus three plus one, which is nine, 13, 16, 17. So let's see if we can get that. And we did. So this little method works, but only if the given list contains at least one non-positive number. So what would happen if this given list only had positive numbers? For example, five, four, four, three, and one. Let's see what happens by running the cell. Oops, it actually gave us an error called index error. And it says index error, list index out of range. And it actually makes sense because when i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We go through this list because given list square brackets 4, which is 1, is greater than 0. And then we go to this point, i plus equals 1. And i will be 5. And then we'll check here, is given list square, square brackets 5 greater than 0. But when we ask Python what's at index 5 of given lists, it's gonna give us an error because nothing exists at index five. So we'll need to fix it by adding an additional condition to the while loop by saying while i is less than five and given list square brackets i is greater than zero. And actually, instead of saying five explicitly, we could also say length of given list, which means the length of given list and note here that len is another predefined function in Python. And then once we run this cell, this should work now. Oops, I didn't spell it correctly, given list. So I'm gonna write given list again, and then let's run this cell and it works now. Okay, now let's create a new list, given list two, which has both positive numbers and negative numbers. And you might ask, Given this list, can we add up all the positive numbers using a for loop instead of a while loop? The answer is yes, we can. Let's see how that works. So we're gonna define total four to be zero, and then we're gonna write four element in given lists to colon total four plus equals element, and then print element. So currently, of course, what this block does is this is gonna add up all the elements in given lists to, to total four. So that will include both positive numbers and negative numbers. What if we wanted to break out of the loop as soon as we see a negative number? We can do that with the break statement. So we're gonna write here, if the current element is less than or equal to zero, colon, then, break out of this loop. So what, how this works is this is gonna add up the elements up to right here, one, and one is not less than or equal to zero, so we're not gonna break, and we're gonna add one to total four, and after that, element will become minus two. And at that point, element is of course less than or equal to zero, so we'll break out of the for loop, so that way we won't check any elements after that, and we're not gonna add any of the negative numbers to total four. So with this method, element should, we should print total four instead. And once we print total four, we should see 17, which is a sum of all the positive numbers, of course. And we see exactly that. And actually this break statement works in while loops exactly the same way. So let's see how that works by solving the same problem with the same list, given list two. We're gonna first define total five to zero, 
and then we're gonna write a while loop saying while something, and this something will be a statement that's always true. So it could be something like while one is less than two, it's kind of silly, but this statement is always true, right? Because one is always less than two. And then once we meet a certain condition, we'll break out of the while loop with the break statement. And actually, instead of writing this silly statement, one less than two, you can just write true because true is always true. And note that true here has the T capitalized. So we're gonna write while true. And then before this while loop, we're going to define i to be zero. This is going to be the index that we're going to use. And in this while loop, we're gonna write total five plus equals given list square brackets i. So that says add the current element and this should be given list two. Add the current element in given list two to total five and then increment i by i plus equals one. And if the next item, if given list square brackets i is less than or equal to zero, then break out of this loop. And here I'm just assuming that this given list has at least one non-positive number. So what's gonna happen with this block is i will be zero, one, two, three, four. And as soon as i is four, we're gonna add given list square brackets four, which is one, two total five, and then i will be five after this line. And because given list square brackets five is minus two, that's of course less than or equal to zero, we're gonna break out of this while loop. And after that, we're gonna print total five, and that should give us 17 if we didn't make any mistake. Actually, I made a mistake here. Given list, this should be given list two because we're just looking at given list two. And this should fix everything. And it did, we get 17. And here's a little problem to practice what you learn in this video. Let's say you're given this list, given list three, and you don't necessarily know the contents of this list beforehand, but you know that the elements in this list are sorted in a descending order. So of course that means when you go right, the numbers always go down or stay the same. Can you find the sum of all the negative numbers instead of all the positive numbers. I would use a while loop here, but there is a way to do it with a for loop as well. Okay, and as usual, if you wanna download the file I created through this video, just go to csdojo.io slash python6 and make sure to follow csdojo on Facebook if you haven't yet, because this is where I announce my live streams and stuff. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.